Oh, you want to go swim so badly? Come on. Come on. Get him in the bucket. All right, Rockstar, you ready? Okay, so today we're gonna to talk to you guys about um, the technology that we use in order to achieve normal blood sugar levels. Um, and you just saw a day of hard play at the beach and a beautiful straight line that we were, that we experienced yeah. over that 24 hour period. Um, and we're really excited to share our successes, um, but we're also gonna sh share our challenges and, and when we don't get it right. Um, but we've been really pleased with the technology that we have. So we know that normal blood sugars, that's always going to be our goal for ABLE. And that <laughs> is between 70 and 120. That's what the research shows. But we also, so we read that, but we also test that um, on ourselves. So we check the other two kids' blood sugars occasionally. Um, so we know without a doubt that that is completely within normal range. Um, those numbers at 70 to 120. We also know, I mean, now we know that that's achievable for ABLE between diet and technology um, and modern medicine with the insulin that we have available and activity. We can't unlearn that this is achievable. And so that is Sean and my expectation of ourselves that we enable, mm -hmm. um, we enable him to achieve that. What are you looking at right there? My blood sugar. Your blood sugar? So let's talk about how that works. So we have the Dexcom G6. It's the, it is the CGM or continuous glucose monitor that we have, and uh, we've enjoyed it. So basically how it works is we get an applicator. It looks like this. And one of these is used to put a sensor that goes underneath the skin in the inter interstitial fluid, and it measures the blood glucose uh, underneath the skin. It goes in right now, currently, bud, where we have right about here in your abdomen, can you show us really quick, sweetheart? All right. Oh, hold on one second, buddy. There we go. There's a Bluetooth transmitter in the middle, and that links to his phone. And his phone transmits that. He's linked Bluetooth to his iWatch, and also his phone transmitted over the wireless or the cell service to Trish and our phones on the follow-up, so we can see what his blood glucose is, or his interstitial glucose. And that's how we're able to make it work. Uh, really simple, really really nice piece of technology and we're very grateful for it. I would add that some very awesome and anonymous folks donated an iWatch for Abel uh, to have and I think he enjoys the watch. You like? Do you like the watch, bud? Yeah? And I don't have to go down and grab it out of my pocket all my phone out of my pocket all the time. Yeah, that makes it kind of nice, right? <laughs> do you like having the ability to see what your blood, what Dex is saying? Yeah? Do you feel like you're able to manage it and have an idea about what you're doing and what's going on? Cool. Anything you want to say to somebody who was new to this? No? How long do I get to go play outside and in the house? Right now, man. We're going to jump in the pool. <laughs> so, he's out. There have been a lot of learning points, and, and the, leaning cur the learning curve has been very steep at times. Uh, one of the things that we know noticed immediately is the interstitial, the, the, blood, the glucose in the interstitial fluid lags behind the glucose in the blood. So we always check his blood whenever we are making a decision for treatment, whether that is for insulin or to give him uh, glucose. glucose. And specifically, it's about 20 minutes behind. For, and everybody's experience may vary, but that's what we are experiencing. Um, but what has been really helpful is that we, it helps us identify the trends. And the accuracy for the Dexcom, there, there's ability to calibrate it, and I would say that we do uh, have to calibrate every now and then. Um, but it's usually within within five milligrams per deciliter, which is really, really impressive. Our goal being um, normal 
blood sugar levels, that would be widely accepted as between 70 and 120 milligrams per deciliter. Um, so that is what we have Abel's alarm set at. Um, There's a signal loss alarm right there. Yep, because we have his phone. He's not right by it. Um, so we have it at 70 to 120. Um, now we could set that low lower, but we want to know when he goes below 70 so that we can keep an eye on if he's stable at 70 or completely comfortable. Now if we see that the trend is going low, um, we want to know that so that we can treat it with glucose once we get out of our comfort zone with that. We wish that we could set that upper limit lower than 120 because we want to be able to treat before he gets to 120. I would like to be able to set it at 100. Um, I don't know that we would treat at 100, but we want to be able to keep an eye on it. Yes, it is very helpful. The alarms are very loud. We wake up at night to them, and Abel does not, thankfully. Somehow he sleeps with them, but we don't, so that's actually a blessing. And the one thing with that, like For we're now. very grateful that Abel is sleeping through that. Um, now, however, during the day, we want Abel to pay attention to those alert, alerts. So when we hear it, um, I'll ask Abel, hey, what's Dex say? We call, we fondly call our Dexcom Dex, um, because I don't want Abel to become numb or just kind of tune it out. I need him, we need him, he needs him to be aware of what's going on also. So we don't hound him with it, but it's just a very casual, hey, what's Dex say? Um, because we want to train him, he, the ultimate goal is for him to take care of himself completely um, and we, we think that's an appropriate thing to start with now. Abel will lose signal. Um, you know, like when we're at the beach, he's not going to stay within 20 feet of his phone. When he's in the pool, straight line distance, he's still within 20 feet of his phone, but it's not just straight line distance. He will lose signal in the pool. What's beautiful about that is with our diet, um, with the technology, we know that he's stable. And then with our diet, we know we don't have to worry about massive drops or raises while he is not in range. And when he's out of out of range, something that's really nice is that Dexcom is still taking the readings. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't shown up in the gaps yet. So it will fill in that time that you've lost signal with the readings what they were once you regain the signal, which is actually a really, a really nice feature. We're just very grateful again for the technology that gives us the information for us to make good decisions. Yes, and for the people who don't have the watch, God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I hope these videos are helpful. Um, we're really enjoy, enjoying putting the content together. And God bless you all. Have a great week. Recording this whole time. Yep. Oh. Okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs>